Another example is avoiding other worldviews and perspectives which would contradict your own worldview or threaten your worldview. A lot of religions do this. A lot of cults do this. A lot of people within you know, political ideology, basically every ideology does this. Every ideology, as I've explained before in my epistemology episodes, it tries to create a sort of a, a, a hermetically sealed bubble, which we call the worldview or a paradigm, and it tries to lock you in, and it, 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 it's very sneaky in how it prevents you from looking outside of the bubble, because if you look outside the bubble too much, it'll burst the entire bubble. This is exactly what, what religion does, for example, in the classical sense. But for example, materialist science does this as well. So this is not just some you know, naive religious fundamentalists that are guilty of this. Very intelligent, rational scientists are guilty of this as well. And so I want you to notice this within yourself. When you hear some sort of different perspective, maybe you watch some YouTube video or some, some public intellectual telling you something that conflicts with your worldview, uh, a lot of times what you do is you just shut that person down, you demonize that person, you marginalize that person, dismiss that person, laugh at that person, ridicule him, whatever. But really, that's just an avoidance mechanism from facing some kernel of truth. Now, maybe what he's talking about is not 100% true, but there's some kernel of truth there, and that is the thing that you're actually afraid of allowing into your own worldview because it would destroy your worldview eventually. Another example would be avoiding listening to feedback from others. A similar situation, you know, certain feedback can be so painful to integrate because it's so profoundly true and other people can see things about you that you can't see about yourself because of how self-deception works. You know, when you're deeply wrapped up in self-deception, somebody else can just pierce through your bubble of self-deception very quickly with like a single sentence. They can just cut right to the core of the truth of how you're bullshitting yourself. And then when that happens, like it, it, it terrifies you. And then you can notice yourself getting angry, lashing out at that person, demonizing that person, shutting that person down, ridiculing that person, you know, all these sorts of coping mechanisms just to avoid getting your own little bubble punctured. But actually, if you accept it, if you were more open and not so avoidant of truth, you could actually accept that feedback and then integrate it and that would grow you. But of course, it would also kill a part of you. Because then you'd have to admit to yourself that, well, yeah, that person was right. You know, I was being arrogant. I was being a jerk. I was being a devil or something like that. And so that's why a lot of people are, are very touchy and um, not open to feedback. And hey, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> I'm not above that. Um, all of us are so flawed and so selfish that basically, and, and we're all so self-deceived and full of bullshit and fantasies that it's very easy to cut a person down. If you're very perceptive, you can kind of observe a person, you can just, you can tell them a single sentence that will just go right to the heart of his bullshit and just cut that person like to the core. Um, and of course, if you do that, that person will usually get very defensive and make an enemy out of you. They're not gonna be like, oh, thank you for cutting me down to my core. Thank you for cutting through all my bullshit and self-deception. No, they're gonna hate you <laughs> when you do something like that, right? Because it's, it's, it's so threatening. A lot of times we, we fool ourselves so thoroughly that we think that not only have we fooled ourselves, but we fooled everybody else around us too. But then it can be kind of shocking to realize that, oh, wait a minute, I've only fooled myself. I haven't successfully fooled everybody else around, around me. They can see through my bullshit. And then that can make you feel very vulnerable and threatened and afraid. Uh, another example of avoiding truth is that something is going wrong in your life in some situation, but then you're in denial about it. And you pretend as though, oh, no, 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 nothing's going wrong. It's all going to work out. It's going to work out. You know, a good example of this would be the United States military interventions in, in the Middle East, for example, Afghanistan or Iraq. You know, <laughs> we go into there and we, we kind of fool ourselves into thinking that, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to defeat everybody with our superior military technology within a few months. And then they're going to be all happy that we defeated the evil tyrants and 
terrorists. And then, uh, you know, yeah, we'll be able to leave in a year. Ah, oh, two years top, maybe three years tops. We'll we'll be we'll be out of there, and then we're still there twenty years later, and we're in denial about it. And then, when people point out, oh, you know, it's going wrong. You know, we're not we're not winning over there, and then people are in denial about it because they don't want to admit that it was a mistake to go in there in the first place. So think about how that happens in your own life. 